Hello my friends, this is Coxer. I'm back from my travel and I have three little ideas. I will do it very very short and I will do it very painless. I leave the big blah blah for others but I have a theory and I want you to be my peers to review my idea. In many, many videos and very often is asked, why is the reason that America and also some other regions, some other countries are so overwhelming uh, religious and mostly uh, Christian? I am simple. I think there is only one reason or an overwhelming reason. It's because of competition. In our old European countries, like in my own country, we have still Catholicism as state religion and nothing else as alternative. But people or the population gives a fuck about religion. I think that when I see what, uh, or how many people are in churches, I don't think that more than maybe 40% are still believers and are still following the Catholic faith. After the reformations there were some countries adapting a state faith. So all the people, all the minions of the country had to have the same religion as the king, the prince, the count or whatever they had. And so we have today uh, the Church of England, the Church of Denmark, the Church of Sweden, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this dictated religion to the people had no competition. They had maybe the competition from non-believers, but it was not never really popular to be a non-believer. In these countries, we have today the majority of people who are non-believers. When I watch some videos from America and I will take a little trip in the main street of uh, American town, at any corner I will see a different Christian church of one of these 36,000 different denominations and they are all in competition to each other. When they gain a new member of their church, they gain someone who pays for the religion. An alternative is not offered. The alternative is whether you go to this Christian church or to the other Christian church. It's not questioned, do I really need a church? Because this alternative question is not posed. The question is only which of the churches you want to go to. To choose your church, it's like choosing going to Six Flags or to Walt Disney. You might maybe ask, what church has the better choir, the better music? What church offers maybe also a football team or a basketball team or a bingo club for elderly people organized by the church? All these components are competition and they are a big point when you have to choose to which church you will belong to. Now, take a look at this charismatic leader of the church. When he preaches the gospel, your heart is melting. It's really like a child going in front of Mickey Mouse for the first time and say, yeah, 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 you are my preacher, you are my prophet, hallelujah! No, it's certainly not fair for me to speak only about America. Let's look at another country. Let's take a look at Ireland. Being Irish means in the same time being Catholic. And this all against the 
Church of England and against the British Empire, and even if today in Ireland itself this is no more that important, these Irish who went outside, who immigrated, and are now today in the third, fourth, fifth generation of uh, immigrated children, they still think that it's important to say, yes, I'm Catholic, because I'm Irish, yes, I'm Irish, and I am Catholic. Romania, 20 years after the fall of the communism, the Siebenberg sucks with their Protestant faith, the Catholics and the Orthodox Church are again in competition, and there is a very, very big spice inside with all the gypsies, hocus pocus, nature religions, and this made that uh, Romania becomes more and more in Europe the most Christian country. Ex-Yugoslavia, bravo, bravo, today we have splitted everything and not like in history before, but now we have made from every religion their own country. The former so Christian South Europe, San Lazar in Portugal, Franco in Spain, the military dictature in Greece and also Mussolini in Italy, they very much needed Christianity to fight or to build up an enemy image uh, which was communism and socialism. After the fail of all these old dictatures, no more need for the people to have a religion to fight against these imaginary uh, enemies. So I hope some of my examples and arguments were convincing for you. If they were or not, Leave your comment or a video answer and let's go on with this discussion. This was Coxter. Ciao, ciao. Caress you and thank you very much.